Hi there. This is edition number 37 of Joy Sightings, in which I will read two parables of Safed the Sage, whose real name was William E. Barton. The two parables I will read are How I Obtained the Philosopher's Stone and The Pins. How I Obtained the Philosopher's Stone Now in the days of my youth there was a wise man who had lived to a great age, and he had a stone called the Philosopher's Stone, wherein he looked and saw strange things, and understood great mysteries. And all of his friends wondered what he would do with the stone when he died. And it came to pass that he sent out messengers to all the prophets and sages and soothsayers, and said unto them, Behold, I go the way of all flesh, and before I go I shall give this stone to the one who is to follow after me. Come ye then, all who are wise, and let me discover which of you is worthy, that he may inherit this stone. And most of those who were reputed wise began to make excuse, for they feared to come lest they should lay bare their folly, and they sent him messages saying that they had previous engagements, but hoped that he would send them the stone by parcel post and they would pay the freight. But there were seven men who went from seven cities, and they came before him. And he sat in his chair, and he had a long white beard, and he commanded the seven wise men to stand before him. And thus he spake to them, This stone, which was brought to earth by a meteor, and found by a man who was a seventh son of a seventh son, I shall give to the man among you who returneth the right answer to the question which I shall ask. Are you ready for the question? And certain of the wise men answered and said, We are ready. Ask us whatever question thou wilt. Ask it in the firmament or in the earth, in the land or the sea, the things movable or things immovable. Lo, we are ready. Then he said, I will ask you this question. What is the best way for a man to help a woman over a fence? And they were all dumb for a season, for truly he had put them up against a hard one. Then answered the first of the wise men, he said, He should stand with her upon the nearer side, and with his right hand under her left elbow should gently lift her the while she climbeth. And the second one answered and said, He should kneel upon one knee and let her step in his hand as if she were to mount an horse. And the third said, He should himself climb over first and offer her his hand while she gracefully steppeth down on the farther side. And the fourth said, he should indeed climb over first, and she should climb to the top. And when she standeth there upon the top of the fence, he should put up both hands, not permitting her to climb down, but should cause her to leap boldly and gracefully into his arms. And the fifth said, he should assail the fence and carry it away as Samson did the gates of Gaza, so should he make an highway for her to pass through. And the sixth said, The way for a man to help a woman over a fence is to walk with her till they find a gate, and open the gate and walk through with her, and the lovelier the lady, the farther it should be to the gate. Now when they had all spoken, they waited for the ancient man to award the stone, and he said, Have ye all spoken? And they answered and said, 
We have spoken. And they had forgotten me, for I was the youngest of them all. But the ancient man had seen me, and he beckoned with his hand, and I drew near, and he said to me, Young man, what sayest thou? With which of these six men dost thou agree? And I answered, With none of them. Then he said, Speak thou, and tell us what is the best way for a man to help a woman over a fence. And I answered and said, The best way for a man to help a woman over a fence is for him to cross over and go on a little space, minding his own business, yet not too far, and let her climb over any old way that pleaseth her. Then they were all silent, and he gave the stone to me. The Pins Now it was the Sabbath day, and I rose and washed myself and attired myself in clean raiment, so as to go to the house of God. And it came to pass that I sought in the middle drawer, and found therein a clean shirt which had been sent home from the laundry. And the bosom thereof shone like polished alabaster, and the starch therein was so stiff that one might scarcely open the buttonholes without a screwdriver. And before I could put it on, I pulled out sundry pins which the laundry had placed therein. And there were many pins in the shirt. And after I had pulled out pins enough to hold the solar system in place, I put on the shirt. But I had overlooked one pin. And I went to the synagogue, and I sat down, and I found that there remained a pin in the garment from which I had withdrawn so many pins. And I changed my position so that the pin no longer hurt me, and I forgot about it for a season. But when we had risen up to praise the Lord in song, and had sat down again, behold, the pin hurt me again, and in quite another position of mine anatomy, and later I found it still elsewhere. When I had returned to my house, I removed my garments, and sought for the pin, and found it, and removed it, and it hurt me no more. And I said to my soul, Take not over much comfort in the faults thou hast removed, neither be thou self-righteous. Behold, while one pin remaineth in thy shirt, did it not hurt thee in twenty places? Even so is one fault which thou removest not. Therefore, let no one cherish pride until he be perfect, and if the time come when he count himself perfect, lo, this belief is the one remaining pin. Yea, it is long like a hat pin, and jabbeth both himself and others. Wherefore, beware of self-righteousness, and see thou forget not to remove the pins that remain.'